This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association with MTK Global via Skype in Fresno. I believe I'm joined by WBO super lightweight champion of the world, Jose Ramirez. Jose, before we talk boxing, I know you've been doing some great work outside the ring um, in your hometown of Fresno, uh, giving supplies to people in this uh, tough crisis we're going at at this moment. Just tell me about it, Jose. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I live in a uh, very farming community. Uh, I live in the central part of California. Uh, we are pretty much responsible of 58% of the produce that people eat in the United States, and also 38% international, uh, worldwide. So there's many, many jobs of hardworking people here in the Central Valley of California, a lot of immigrants, um, and uh, a lot of Hispanics, a lot of Latinos. Well, Central California is a, mix, a mixture of a lot of people, too, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern, a lot of Europeans, and, uh, you know, and there, it's a very family-oriented uh, uh, community here in the Central Valley. And, uh, you know, as we all know, we're going through this crisis of the COVID-19. Uh, when, it first, when it first got brought up, uh, you know, it created a panic, and uh, a lot of people started going to started going to the stores and overstocking on the supplies and on the on the toilet paper on the on the sanitizers on the on the food and you know it, I don't know if the people you know didn't know how to react to something like this it was something new but it created some type of chaos you know in the stores um, which means uh those people that were still working such as the people that work in the fields and many other people such as the doctors the and the, the first responders well when they got off work, they would go to the stores and there was nothing left on the shelves. So this is why I took uh, the step to help the people that work in the fields uh, with some of the supplies that they missed out they missed out on um, or they're having trouble getting. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, put boxes together with those supplies. Also, then to continue working in the fields as producing the food is definitely very important. Uh, so they're still exposed to COVID-19. So a lot of the things that I also... What I'm also doing is uh, uh, making sure there's a lot of vitamins and a lot of the proper nutrition they need to boost their, their immune system. Um, you know, so they, they could be out there working and, uh, you know, uh, with the with the strong immune system so they could prevent uh, any illnesses from happening. Well, it's great work you're doing. And hopefully someone who watches the, this video, wherever it may be, is inspired by you and does a, a similar sort of thing, Jose. Definitely. You know, anybody's... Uh, Welcome to join in. Um, you know, I started this with some uh, doctors from the area, from Fresno, California. And, uh, you know, we opened it to the public so they could donate whatever they want to donate if they wish to be a part of this movement. Um, but we're doing, we, you know, we're seeing a very positive reaction from the public. And also people are donating supplies. Uh, people are donating food. Um, we got some good uh, retail stores donating uh some stuff as well and also making it easier for us to purchase the stuff um so you know we uh this is something that i think you know there's only so much one or someone could do but i think if everybody becomes part of it and everybody just gives a little bit of what they have um you know it just creates a bigger a bigger thing and we're going to be able to reach a lot of more people a lot more people so you can find the link to donate on my bio on instagram at jc ramirez 2012 um you know and if you're from the area in California, you could also, uh, uh, in that same link, you'll get some information of, of where to uh, leave the supplies as well and and uh, if, they, if they wish to donate supplies. Well, Evan from Top Rank sent me the link, so I'll put it in the uh, description of this video once I finish. Perfect. Uh, Jose, let's talk about yourself. Um, we know you've got, whenever the situation's over, you've got a fight with Victor Foster. We know Josh Taylor's got his IBF mandatory. If you two get past those, it's, it's, a, it's a big if because Postal's, uh, we know how good he is. Um, even though he's the back end of his career, he's just still a top fighter. But if you come through that and Josh comes through his mandatory, the whole world wants to see you two, you know, both in your primes, both on beat and both champs, uh, both have a mentality that you won't lose. Um, that is the natural fight to make, isn't it? The undisputed fight, Jose. Most definitely. That's a fight that I believe you both want. Um, you know, I, I definitely want that fight. You know, I think it's a great fight for both to have. I, you know, I'm a big believer that one fight does not define a fighter. Um, but I think it's a, it's a fighter that we both uh, want to make as we, you know, we've done our job and our side of the end to uh, to beat the other champions. And, uh, 
now there's you know there's only two of us we're left with all the titles. So I think uh, I think it's something that the uh, fans will definitely enjoy. I think you know that's the fight that I'm gonna enjoy. Uh, Josh Taylor's gonna enjoy. I think we deserve that fight. You know I think we deserve this that opportunity to uh, put the, all the all the marbles in the in the basket and uh, one winner takes out, takes all. You know and uh, and then. Uh, like I said, after that, you know, I most likely be making my move to the 147 pounder, uh, to to the 100 147 pound division. Yeah, it's a, it's a fight that I'm very excited. Um, you know, like you said, I, I got post in front of me, and he has his mandatory. Um, but I think we want this fight so bad. If you come through against Posto and Josh comes through his IBF mandatory, we know Jack Cattrall is is mandatory for that belt that you have. And I've seen quotes online that he, he doesn't want to take step aside money. Do you think he'll force that mandatory position, Jose, and block that undisputed fight? Uh, it's up to him and his team, you know. But if he was, uh, you know, I think if if, if he was a, uh, if his camp was smart, smart enough to understand that, you know, most likely uh, Josh Taylor and myself, or well, the winner will most likely vacate the titles and move up to the to bigger and better things. Uh, he will then have an opportunity to fight for the vacant WBO title against uh, another fighter that's probably not as dangerous as, as, as you know, us, as me. And, uh, you know, that most likely be a smart move for him to weigh one more fight, you know. And, uh, but it's up to him, you know. It's up to him and his team to, to decide that. Um, hopefully, they look at that uh, opportunity as a, you know, uh, as, as something positive for them and something that, you know, uh, they're going to be moving up to the next weight class. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still young and I'm, I still could make 140 for a long time. So you could, you know, you can fight at 140 for much longer than myself. You know, he's not a very big guy. Um, I'm talking about Jack in this, in this case. Um, so, you know, he, he most, most likely uh, will have the opportunity to fight for the vacant road title if he decides to, you know, just wait one more fight. Uh, you know, Take a take a take a uh, step aside money at the same time, um, and let the you know let the fans really enjoy the fight that everybody wants to see. You know, me against uh, Taylor, but again, it's up to him. You know, I there's only so much I could do. In terms of Josh Taylor, when he signed with Top Rank, what was your reaction? You must have been really happy, and that that fight is so much easier to make now. Yeah, you know, and I was uh, I was very excited because uh, you know Top Rank uh, they. Uh, I was I was some, somewhat aware that they were gonna go and sign him, as they wanted to. Uh, they knew, they knew that if they signed Taylor, the they were gonna have control of the undisputed uh, championship belt at, a, at 140 on ESPN. You know, um, if Eddie Hearn or or Matchroom Boxing would have signed Taylor, then I'm not saying the fight would have been uh, not possible to make, but uh, I know Eddie Hearn would have want that fight to be to take place on the zone. Not on ESPN, and that's that's where Top Rank looked at, looked at it as a as a uh, obviously as a business uh, between them and and, and the partners at uh, ESPN to make sure they they bring the best fights uh, to the ESPN network. So um, I was very excited that the fight, you know, to uh, that the sign Taylor and the fight is going to take place on a underneath the Top Rank promotion without uh, they, them having to share the fight with anybody else. Mm-hmm. You've both looked superb, sort of uh, gaining your world titles and obviously making the defenses of them. What have you made of Josh Taylor's rise? And have you have you been watching him quite a lot? Have you seen most of his fights, Jose? No, not not most of them. I uh, not, you know I, I started watching him when uh, this first fight that I watched was once again the Posto, and then I watched him against Paul Grace, uh, and I watched some highlights against uh, Ivan. Um, Branch. Yeah, but uh, the great thing about about the uh, about both of us, um, we're, we seem to be getting better. You know, we seem to be getting better and stronger and and uh, more matured as a, on, on the professional level. I have uh, more professional fights than him. Uh, but you know, the great thing is that is that I'm, I feel personally that I'm I'm only getting I'm only getting stronger and better. And uh, you know, I. He's a very skillful fighter. He's a very uh, I'm sure he had will against uh, against his last fight against Rages, uh, which is uh, something that I, you know, I uh, I get excited and motivated because uh, that's the fighters that I want to face. You know, fighters that 
that has those uh, that type of heart to uh, to not just give in easily, you know. We we just uh, we let the fight go, you know what I mean. So uh, he showed that uh, when he faced adversity, he was uh, you know he didn't handle handle it too well. Uh, and Taylor Taylor did, you know, when we just got got some good shots. Uh, he came back and then continued fighting forward, and he I, he showed he was a better fighter that night. So. Um, I'm glad to be fighting the better 140 pounder, and uh, you know, and Taylor. So that's that's the fighter. That's the fights I want to take. I want to take. That's, those are the fights I want to be a part of. And I think uh, I think the fans are are in for a good one. So hopefully it does happen. And hopefully uh, Jack Catterall doesn't uh, interfere with his fight. Um, as I believe, and you know, I believe I. I believe I could beat Taylor personally. You know, I believe I there's something that he, the, the fans and people on the outside they can't really they can't really see being you know until until they're in front of me. You know, and there's something that maybe the power um, that they're uh, they don't realize the, the power that I'm, I'm that I have that I'm getting as I get older, as I get you know my mature. Um, you know, the combinations might look the same, but there's but when there's much more power behind those combinations, it really makes a difference on on how the other po- uh, fighter reacts to the, to them. You know, even if I, you know, land a one-two to the gloves, you know, believe me, um, it's, it's a lot different when you're inside. You know, um, uh, so I'm looking forward to it. It's a it's a fight that I want. It's, uh, I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I mean, much better fighter than what people think, and and I can't wait to to show that, you know. And it it takes great fighters like Taylor to bring that out of me, you know. Hooker was a good champion, and uh, and he brought something in me that no other fighter has brought, you know. So I'm the type of fighter you could say that uh, meets the expectation, and and uh, the better the challenge, the bigger Jose Ramirez becomes in the ring. So uh, I'm looking forward to the fight against Taylor. What do you believe gives you the edge against Josh Taylor? How do you beat him, Jose? I think the not just not just the pace, but I think my I think the uh, I think the power I think the power um, and also uh, um, I, I believe that uh, my timing is my timing is much better than what uh, my timing is much better than what fighters think, you know, and 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 also my speed. Uh, the uh, Taylor uh, fought guys who uh, who seemed to have power, but they were one, two, one or two punch type of guys. You know, they didn't put the combinations together. I think if I, you know, if, if I show good timing and good power and then put the combinations together like I've shown I've done, I, I think I'm gonna be able to uh, surprise uh, Taylor. You know, and it takes one good punch and, and it takes one good punch and uh, take you know to really. Take the momentum in the fight, but I'm see I'm not I'm not just a one punch guy, you know. I could I could I believe I have power with both hands, and I you know when I land punches, I land two three punches, and uh, and I can mix it pretty well up upstairs and downstairs. Um, but we'll have to see, you know. There's there's uh, so much you know so much that I that I, that I feel I could do against Taylor. Um, so you know it's all different when you're in there, you know. So I'm the type of guy that knows how to get that, and. Uh, change it up if I have to, you know, and uh, I'm sure Taylor has, Taylor feels the same way, you know, but uh, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to really explain, but uh, I just I just feel that I'm a, I'm a much stronger fighter at 140. Do you believe that power could lead to a stoppage against Taylor Jose? I think I have the power to stop anybody at 140, you know, and including Taylor. Jose, just lastly, I want to ask you, you mentioned it earlier, potentially moving to, to welterweight, 147 pounds. Uh, the same rumours have been going around for Josh Taylor. Potentially could see both of you move up to that division. There's an obvious name there at 47 with uh, Terence Crawford, uh, again, at top rank. He's looking for fights. Every other welterweight champion with PBC, so it's been tough. So there could be a, a potential mega fight for yourself with uh, Terence Crawford. Is that in your mind as well, Jose? Definitely, I think it's in the mind of both me and Taylor. Again, um, a fight against Taylor, um, it doesn't mean it's going to be the end of, of both of us our career. You know, um, I think we could, me and Taylor could face each other again at Walter. 
at 147, you know, along the lines, you know. I feel like me and Taylor will be the best uh, 147 families in the future, in, in the near future, you know. Uh, there's a lot, there's talks that Aero Spence and some of those guys are moving up to the 154, 154 pound division. So we're the future a lot to it, you know. Um, but yes, Crawford is a is the easiest fight to make as he signed with top rank. Um, uh, and if you know if everything goes well against uh, Taylor and my fights at 140, I'll, I'll definitely go straight to the route to face any world champion, including Crawford. Uh, so if I have to fight for a title eliminator for the WBO to fight Crawford, I'll definitely do that, you know? And uh, again, fans, I think they're misunder- mis- uh, underestimating the 140 pound class. You know, we have, you know, we're fighting as 140 pounders, right? Uh, but when we put that extra seven pounds, we're gonna be much bigger. Um, I never, I was never able to fight at 135. Even the early, early, early on in my career, I think I fought 135 once or twice, but I fought at 136 catchway type of fight. Crawford, he started at 130, I believe, 135, 140, which means his body frame was a lot smarter than ours. You know, I was never able to beat at 135 as a professional, um, which means my 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 frame was, my frame Taylor's frame is probably much bigger than. Than, than Crawford's, you know. So when we put on the actual muscle, the actual weight, we, when we develop as fighters, uh, we're gonna be a strong welterweight. You know, we might develop a much better welterweight than than super lightweight. You know. So I'm looking forward to just seeing how my body uh, develops, how I grow as a fighter, and how you know I take the muscle and and use it to my to my advantage. Well, I think you and Josh Taylor is one of the best fights in boxing, period. So let's hope it happens. But uh, best of luck against Victor Postle whenever that happens. And I was there once again, well done on, on your work uh, in your community, helping loads of people out. Uh, it's a credit to, to the sport. Well done, Jose. And uh, thanks for the time, Bell. And uh, I'm sure we're going to catch up soon. All right, Jose? All right, brother. Take care. Thank you, man. God bless.